Audio recording, I remember it being so freaking difficult. I spent one month trying to understand how to record, how to post-process your audio, how to use compression, gate, EQ, and so on and so forth, trying to make your audio sound good. And it is still sometimes difficult to capture and post-process your audio correctly. And I used to use for all of my recordings this Zoom H6, which is just the perfect recorder for a prosumer grade customer. And just recently found out that it is not a professional equipment, it is a prosumer equipment. And I um, do not really understand why. Some people say that the preamps in this thing are not that good, but they were good for me. It's got four. Uh, combo jack XLR inputs. It's got gain for each of those. It's got backup track. It's got it's got audio metering. It's got everything you need. It's, it's perfect recorder. I used to think that. And here's the problem with all of the recorders that record at 24 bit. If you try to record something with huge dynamic range, and I'm going to give you an example, you're going to have some difficulties with these types of recorders. And any audio interface for that matter. For example, let's imagine a situation when you try to record a person whispering at the beginning and then screaming just a little bit later. You've got like a couple of options how you can deal with that. The first one is you're gonna have to have a dedicated person who's going to sit there, adjust the gain for the whisper, and then right before this person is starting to scream, he's going to reduce the gain to fit the requirements for the uh, screaming part. But considering I do everything alone, I'm not going to be there, I'm recording the man who's screaming. So I'm not going to be there to just turn that dial at the right moment. So what is my option? My option is to set that gain really, really low for that loud part and try to record whisper with that low gain. And immediately we encounter numerous problems. The first one is you need to boost up the audio impulse to be able to hear that whisper and you're going to boost everything with that whisper, which is not a big problem. You're going to boost up the sound of the fan, you're going to boost up some passing by cars and it is not a problem. The biggest problem is, is that your sound is going to be noisy because you're boosting your signal and there is like this noise floor that is going to be boosted as well and your audio is going to be noisy and you're going to spend a lot of time trying to clean that up, which is not an ideal scenario. This is due to the fact that this device records only up to zero dB. It's got a really big scale in the minus direction, but the biggest sound you can record is 0 dB. Once the sound is going past 0 dB, it's going to be distorted significantly and nothing you can do to restore that sound. It is enough dynamic range in here to record everything that you need. It is minus 140 if I'm not mistaken and that is louder than the sound of jet taking off right next to you. But this is the problem that I just described with these types of recording. You are going to boost the signal up and you're going to boost the noise floor and this is not ideal. So, to replace my Zoom H6, I bought this tiny device. This is called Zoom F3. What is the difference? It looks like it is much inferior to that recorder because it's got only two inputs. It is not even Kamba XLR jack, just an XLR input. It's got a screen which seems like it's been taken from freaking Tetris. And it's got no metering. You cannot really set the levels correctly in here. You know how they recommend to set the levels between minus 6 and minus 12 dB. You cannot really do that in here. So why did I buy this? The thing is that this recorder is capable of recording 32-bit float audio and it is something that I wasn't aware of. I had no idea that this thing exists. What is 32-bit float audio? You can find a video on YouTube that is going to explain in depth how this works and why it is not that better than 24-bit and, and yada yada. I'm not interested in any of that. I'm interested in the practical applications of these little T5s. So how, how would I approach 
this whisper screaming situation using this little device. You see this device is capable of recording sounds that are louder than 0 dB. Frankly speaking, much louder. It's got limit of 750 dB, if I'm not mistaken, above zero and 750 below zero, which is like a lot. You're not gonna be able to clip this device ever. It's not capable of clipping. Your microphone is going to clip much sooner than you'll be able to clip this device. So let's get back to that whisper scream situation. I would set the gain for the whisper part and just leave it and hit record. Once we get to the screaming part, the audio is going to be clipped here. Then I just throw the audio file into my computer and reduce the volume of the clipped portion. And it's going to be fine, it's not distorted, it's not clipped, it is perfectly preserved. This is due to the fact that this device uses only 32-bit floating point audio, which is great. I've never seen something like that. Let me demonstrate it. To you right now i'm speaking at a normal volume and this gain if you can call it that because you just zoom in and out on, on this waveform and this is how you set up your gain you cannot really see whether it is hitting minus six minus twelve minus one have no idea but if i start to scream and this is going to get uncomfortable right now this audio file is clipped but if you bring it into let's say adobe edition you can see that the audio file is actually fine if you do something like that using Zoom H6, you are not going to recover that audio. That audio is going to be clipped no matter what you do. It's going to be lost forever and you need to do ADR, you need to reshoot it, you need to come up with something to fix it. But you are not able to fix the audio that you recorded and it is clipped. This little device is capable of doing that. Now about the device itself, about Zoom F3. The price is quite similar to the Zoom H6. It is a really, really simplistic design. You just turn it on, it's got record button, which you can move then in the hold position. It's going to prevent inadvertent activation or deactivation once you started your recording. You've got your headphone input, you've got line out, volume, menu, play, stop, and you've got uh, powering options. This device is being powered using two AA batteries, but you can connect it to Type-C using power bank and actually power it almost indefinitely. But using batteries is going to get you like four to six hours, depending on how heavy you're going to use it, depending on whether you're using phantom power, depending on whether you're using two microphones, one microphone, so on and so forth. And this is all the information you're gonna get about your audio. No metering, no levels, nothing. You're gonna get just your waveform and that's it because you do not really need to monitor this device because it is impossible to clip the audio. This way I can connect it, just hit it, hit record and forget about this because I'm responsible for the camera, I'm responsible for the lighting, I'm responsible for the blocking, I'm responsible for the actors I do not want to monitor levels of my audio and I do not have a separate person who can do that. So this is the magic of 32-bit float audio. Thank you for watching and I'll see you.